Well, this next case we're going to talk about is called Heart of Atlanta versus U.S. And, of course, you know, I lived through the 60s, which is a little different than most of you, I think, in our class. But case is decided in 1964, around that same time that the decision was made to uh, institute the Voter Rights Act that we've just been talking about. And so what this is is civil rights in the area of accommodation. And what do we mean by accommodation? Well, in the case of Heart of Atlanta, there were actually people that owned restaurants, some of them along uh, major highways, U.S. highways. Uh, the interstates weren't really up and running completely yet, probably another six, seven years before those were all completed, or at least in some form. Uh, they did start those earlier. That started under Eisenhower, but it took probably 20 years to get it to go all over the United States. Uh, so Heart of Atlanta, uh, what it was is, is a, a hotel restaurant in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And the claim was, well, I mean, you know, this isn't really on U.S. Highway, but they said it's within a reasonable proximity to a U.S. Highway. And so basically what they're saying is that um, public accommodation by means of race, the refusal to accommodate people because of race would not be allowed any longer based upon the uh, Civil Rights Act. So what we end up having is the uh, uh, Heart of Atlanta Motel refused to allow blacks to sleep in their rooms, to eat in their restaurant. And so they were charged with a violation of Title II of the Civil Rights Act. And so uh, the question is, did that exceed their Commerce Clause powers uh, to enforce uh, this uh, 14th Amendment and this new law called the Civil Rights Act? And so the uh, court decided by a 9 to 0 vote, uh, no, that the court uh, said that the Commerce Clause did allow Congress to uh, regulate local incidents of commerce and that the Civil Rights Act actually did pass constitutional muster. And uh, so it basically, it, it was a careful limitation on enterprises engaged in, uh, you know, overt um, uh, discrimination because of race. And so it's interesting, but this is one of those rare times when everybody agreed on a case. Uh, and there were times you would see it on the news, you would have these actually guys acting up down in Georgia, Mississippi, places like that, where they'd be passing out axe handles to customer free. Come and have a steak and get a free axe handle uh, in case blacks try to enter this restaurant, you know. Uh, literally on television. They had advertisements on television like that in the South. So times have changed. You don't see those kind of ads anymore. That is true. But uh, there are a certain level of pervasive uh, underground types of racism still in effect. And that's, that's the, the big issue. So Heart of Atlanta, turning point uh, in uh, you know, enforcing these civil rights where people had to give everybody an opportunity. If you're going to be in the commerce, or in other words, selling, buying and selling, you know, motel rooms on highways, uh, then what they're saying is those highways connect to U.S. highways. So basically you're going to have to uh, follow federal law in those kind of situations. Here again, a lot of your uh, states rights advocates and uh, uh, basically, Tenth Amendment type people would argue, well, no, 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 that's excessive, that's too much power, but it's, the issue is uh, the common good, uh, and, you know, so it's, 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 it's a big uh, problem, uh, and it goes really right back to the Civil War and leading up to the Civil War. Some historians argue that the Civil War was fought over race, uh, over slavery. But others say, well, no, slavery was just a, an element of the real problem. And the real problem is, which is this going to be? Is this going to be a centralized federal government, or is it each state going to get to pick and choose what they want to do? And, you know, this continues to haunt us, because we have states that say, well, we want to outlaw abortion now. Uh, and, uh, you know, we don't care what you think of us. 
we just feel like that that's important and we're putting our foot down and federal government has gotten too big. So once again, it's the, the substantive issue is one part, which is slavery, abortion, uh, racism, you know, all these things. But the other part is what we call the methodological or procedural issues that involve laws that are in place. Is it going to be a federal law is going to overcome the state law or the other way around? So in rare terms, do the courts usually find that the states should outrank the federal government? Basically, under the Supremacy Clause, generally speaking, they're going to probably side most of the time with the federal government. And that just doesn't sit well with a lot of people. So that's an issue that we have to contend with. So, okay, well, hey, that's it for this week. Hope you got something out of this. Uh, just trying to help you along with this a little bit to understand it. Uh, we'll be back soon with something else for you uh, and hope that you're enjoying this class. Thank you. Bye.